is a single mother. She works at a bank. She has a son. He is eight years old. His name is Dennis. During the school year, Dennis goes to an after-school club at the community center. It is very good. Some of his school friends go to the same club. They do their homework together, play games and watch television. When Laurel finishes work for the day, she goes to the community center and collects Dennis. They go home together. But the school holidays are a problem. Laurel has to work, but there is no one to look after Dennis. The after-school club is closed during the holidays. Laurel finds a holiday camp. Dennis can stay at the camp for the long summer holiday. The children at the holiday camp play many sports. They enjoy outdoor adventure activities. Dennis likes fishing in sport, so he is happy at the camp. Laurel misses Dennis. The house is very quiet and empty without him. It is Friday evening and Laurel is finishing work. She is walking out of the bank when the telephone rings. It is the manager of the holiday camp. I am very sorry, says the manager. Dennis had an accident. He fell out of a tree. He broke his leg and he hit his head. His leg will be okay, but the hospital is worried about his head. They are doing tests. Please come to the hospital. Laurel runs to the car park and jumps into her car. She is very worried. I must get to the hospital. She thinks. The hospital is about 50 kilometers away. If I drive on the new road, it will take me almost 40 minutes. But if I take the old road through the forest, I can get there quicker, she thinks. A long time ago, people lived in the forest. But no one lives there now. On Saturdays and Sundays, a lot of people use the forest road. Families have picnics in the forest, fishermen go to catch fish in the river, and people enjoy riding their bikes there. But during the week, the forest is empty. Laurel turns off the main road and onto the forest road. She is driving very fast. I must be careful. I must slow down. I could have an accident, she thinks. But she is very worried about her son. She can't slow down. Suddenly the car stops. What? shouts Laurel. What's wrong? Oh no. I don't believe it. She looks at the control panel of the car. Gas. I've run out of gas. Oh no. I forgot to get gas. She looks out of the car window. What can she do? It is dark. She is in the middle of the forest. It is about 10 kilometers back to the main road and about 12 kilometers to the other end of the forest. Should I walk? She thinks. But if I walk, it will take more than an hour. I have to get to the hospital quickly. Maybe I should call a taxi? Yes. The taxi driver can bring me some gas. She takes out her cell phone. Oh no! There is no signal. I don't believe it. She thinks. I have to walk. She gets out of the car and looks around. Which way should I walk? 
Just then, she sees a man. He walks between the trees on the side of the road and stands in front of her. He is dressed in work clothes and has an old towel around his neck and the lower part of his face. He doesn't say anything. He just looks at her. Please, can you help me? says Laurel. My son is in hospital. He had an accident. He fell out of a tree. I have run out of gas. But I must get to the hospital. My son might die. The man puts up his hand. He turns and walks back between the trees. Laurel watches him. It is dark, but she can see a small house between the trees. She waits. After about five minutes, the man comes back. He is carrying a very old gas can. Laurel jumps into the car and pulls the lever to open the cover to the gas tank. The man pours the gas from the can into the tank. Laurel gets out of the car with her wallet. I will pay you for the gas. She tries to give him a $20 bill. The man steps back and waves his hands at her. He doesn't say anything, but he seems to be telling her no. The man walks back to the little house. Laurel watches him. Then, she remembers. Dennis. The hospital. She jumps back in the car and drives on through the forest. It is the next morning. Laurel is sitting in a small park next to the hospital with a cup of coffee. Dennis is fine. The hospital did many tests. Dennis's head injury is not serious. He has a broken leg and a headache, but he can leave the hospital on Sunday. Laurel thinks about the man in the forest. He was very kind. She feels bad because he did not take any money for the gas. I should go back and say thank you, she thinks. I will give him a small present and try to give him some money too. Laurel goes back into the hospital. Dennis is sleeping. She puts a note next to his bed. The note says, I am going shopping, I will come back soon. Laurel wants to buy the man a nice scarf. The man had an old towel around his neck and face. He needs a scarf, thinks Laurel. Laurel goes to a menswear shop and chooses a nice checked scarf. Then she goes to a stationery shop and buys a thank you card. She writes a message in the card and puts $20 into the envelope with the card. Laurel drives to the forest. It is bright and sunny, and there are many bikers and fishermen in the forest. She stops her car. This is it, she thinks. This is the place where I saw the man last night. She gets out of her car and walks through the trees. She looks for the little house. There is no house. Perhaps this is not the right place, she thinks. But I'm sure it is near here. She walks about 50 meters. Then, she sees an old man sitting on the grass under a tree. He is eating his lunch. I'm sorry to trouble you, she says to the man. But do you know this part of the forest well? I am looking for a small house. I thought it was very near here. I lived here when I was a small boy, says the man. I've been coming back to fish here for the past 40 years. A long time ago, there were houses at the end of the road. But there was only one house here. 
A man called William Stewart lived in the house. Where is Mr. Stewart's house? asks Laurel. William Stewart died. Then, the house was empty. It fell down about twenty years ago. Where was it? asks Laurel. It was right there. The man points to a space. That area where there are no trees. The house was there. What happened to Mr. Stewart? It was a terrible accident. He was a forester, like my own father. One day, he climbed a tree to cut off some of the small branches. He fell. His axe was on the ground and he fell on the axe. His throat was cut. Laurel says thank you to the man and walks away. Who helped me last night? She thinks. Not Mr. Stewart. He's been dead for a long time. Maybe I imagined the house. It was dark. Maybe someone was camping near here. Maybe I saw a camping tent. She looks at the envelope with the card and money inside and the bag with the scarf. What should I do? She thinks. Then, she has an idea. I will leave the card and the scarf near the place of Mr. Stewart's old house. Perhaps the man will come back. She puts the envelope and the scarf in the middle of the area near the place of the old house. Then she drives back to the hospital. Dennis leaves hospital the next day. When they are driving home, Laurel tells Dennis about the gas and the man in the forest. Let's go to the forest. Did the man find your present? says Dennis. I want to see. Oh, I don't think so, says Laurel. You should be home in bed. Oh, please. It won't take a long time. You said, the forest road is quicker than the new road. I will be home in bed sooner. Laurel laughs. Okay. I guess we can drive home that way. But you can't get out of the car. In the forest, Laurel stops the car. It was here, she says. I put the present and the card over there. I'll go and look. Dennis waits in the car. Soon Laurel comes back. Were the present and the card still there? asks Dennis. No, answers Laurel slowly. But these were there. She shows David an old towel and a $20 note. Thank you for watching. Please like, share, subscribe for more videos, press the bell icon and select all to get notifications.